Hello everyone, my name is Yin Zhao. Our term project is called Deep Image Prior, Image Restoration with Neural Networks Without Learning. This is the content of our presentation. We will give a brief introduction first and show the method, followed by the experiment, and finally draw a conclusion. First, let's take a look about the introduction. Deep convolutional neural network is also called CNN. It has been widely used in the image restoration and the image generation. Currently, CNN trains the network on a large data set of images. So one may assume that CNN can learn realistic image priors from the large data sets of images. And it is the reason why CNN could achieve a good performance but actually, it is wrong. Instead, learning alone is insufficient. The structure of CNN could capture a large amount of image statistical information, and it is the reason why CNN could achieve a good performance. We have continued the work of the deep image prior. For the deep image prior, it applies and train date randomly initialized CNN on single degraded image. It only used the handcrafted structure of the network. It has four applications, which includes image denoising, image super resolution, image impainting, and image restoration. For the image denoising, originally, we have an image with some noise. And after we apply the deep image prior, we could get an image without noise. And for super resolution, originally, we have a low resolution image. And after we apply the deep image prior, we could get a high resolution image. And for the impending, originally, we have some text on the image, we have some empty area on the image. And after we apply the deep image prior, we could remove the text or remove the blank area. And for the restoration, originally we have an old image. And after we apply the deep image prior, we could get a better result. For our work, we have changed the hyperparameters and the network architectures of the original code. We would like to find the optimized value because also mentioned that their value are far from optimal. And we have also changed different type of images to better examine the performance of the deep image prior. We have applied different variation in the application of image denoising, super resolution, in painting and restoration. Okay, so hello everyone, my name is Kachin, and now I'm going to introduce the method of this deep image prior paper to you guys. So let's recap the generator network first. Um, a typical generator network will take a lantern vector Z as input, and it will go through a convolutional neural network parameter, like the X zeta here, and output a 2D structure, which is just an output generated image. And we will calculate a distance function between the generated image and the target image, which in our case is the cropped image. Um, so the objective function is just try to uh, find the optimal theta, which can minimize the energy function between those two. Um, for simplicity, in this paper, they just use the L2 distance between the generated image and the target image. So let's say if we just uh, implement this procedure naively. I think it's quite obvious that the, the network will finally output the corrupted image again instead of uh, recovering the plain image as we want. So is there anything we can do so that based on the architecture of the conventional network, we can somehow recover the plain image from the, the corrupted image as it could. In this paper, the uh, the, the authors they are actually observing this kind of phenomenon called deep image prior. So first, let's think that 
a crop image x0 here, it can actually be seen as the combination of plan image x and the and a random noise image here. And they think that the architecture of the deep commercial neural network will affect the prior distribution in the parameter space of the neural network. Um, you are all from higher independence to the random noise and lower independence to the image signal. It, it means that the network will first fit the lower level image statistics before the unstructured noise. So that the network, you will actually try to find a good looking or local minimum first, and then you will try to convert to the cropped image because of overfitting. So it kind of give us, a, give us an idea, right? If we can somehow restrict the optimization process to a certain number of iterations, then we can actually recover the plan image output before the network overfitting to noise level. So this is actually the motivation of uh, this paper and to prove that the, this kind of phenomena is actually existing. They do, they also provide a simple preliminary start here as shown in this figure. So they try to deploy their model, deploy the generator network on four different kinds of inputs. The blue line here is just a Natural, naturally looking image. And the green line here is a natural looking image plus a random noise. So that, those two are quite usual, but here the red line, it is just uh, it, it is just an image whose pixel levels has been randomly shuffled so that the result image were not seen as a natural looking image anymore. And the purple line here is just a very simple random Gaussian noise. So as we can see here, the blue line and the green line seems like all contain, since they both contain uh, natural looking image signals, the network is actually uh, converging very fast because like they can fit the image statics very well and very fast. But for the red line and the purple line, seems like they, 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 don't contain, they, they don't contain any natural looking image signal anymore. They can, only, they can only be treated as noise. And as we can see here, the convergence is much more slow, it's much more slowly. And actually, it shows that the network is actually uh, offers much higher dependence to the fitting of noise. So yeah, so this is actually the basic idea of this paper of the inquiry. And that's the end of the lesson section. Thank you. Next, uh, we'll briefly summarize the experiment results. We will use peak signal to noise ratio, PSR for short, to evaluate the quality of the image. Here values would be better. For denoising, here we show the results of varying the learning rates, input depths, optimizers, and upsampling methods. In varying the learning rates and input depths, we do not see much difference. All the experiments converge very quickly within the first 1,000 iterations. We can conclude their insistent parameters. In the third figure, Adam performed better than LBFGS. This is consistent with common practice. Upsampling methods also do not affect much. Here we tested different architectures. The original model is called Skip. We also implemented a model ResNet, which uses transpose convolution. The original implementation leaves ResNet as a to-do atom and ignores the transpose convolution. But the left figure shows that Skip performs the best. For the rest net, it learns a small ball in the beginning, which also corresponds to the plateau in the left figure. Then it gradually learns the whole image by returning this small ball until the final one. We think ResNet doesn't use Skip connection, so it's hard to restore some parts of the image. We also try different images. Basically, the best performance shows in the middle phase instead of the last one. This is because the model will learn the noise in the latter phase. However, images in the middle phase could have low resolution. Also notice that images with very high noise are unable to be recovered, such as the bottom one, since the model will learn the noise at the beginning. For super resolution, here we show the results of varying the learning rates, kernel taps, optimizers, and standard deviation of noises. The performance improves as we decrease the learning rates to 0 0.001.
we could conclude that the, the original hyperparameter value suggested by the author is far from the optimal one. But when we write the optimizer tab and kernel tabs, the value will vary a lot. This is because the reconstruction of the image depends on the network learning capability. In addition, the variation of standard deviation also affects the performance. This is because when an image has a high standard deviation, it will result in a distortion of the image. We also override the number of upsampling and downsampling filters. Since the larger number of filters enable us to learn more prior information, we can see better values. In addition, the skip connections number used by the author is still opt not optimal. Finally, we try some new images with specific features. For example, they have different structures. The left one shows the ground truth. The middle one shows the bicubic interpolation results. And the right one shows the skip results. We can see that skip perform better than bicubic interpolation results. This is Chang Yang He, and I'm going to introduce our experiments on inpainting and the restoration. This figure shows experiment results of inpainting under different hyperparameters including learning rate, input depth, padding, and optimizer type. As we can see, all these hyperparameters, except for padding, have substantial influence on the PSNR performance. And for noise initialization and the upsampling mode, both the two factors influence the performance of inpainting. The optimal upsampling method for inpainting is nearest interpolation in blue line, which is different from other tasks. From this figure, we can see the experiment result of the painting with a variation of network architecture, skip, scale, and the network type. Generally, wider and larger models generate better results. Skipped network outperforms other models, and the no skip outperforms skip connections. That means PIN FCN achieves the best performance. We apply deep image prior for inpainting to two more outdoor and indoor scenes to verify the generalization ability. It can still generate convincing inpainting results, but there is still improvement space, especially for more complex outdoor scenes. You can see shadow here. For restoration, we also test the same hyperparameters. In addition to padding mode, Restoration is also not sensitive to learning rate. And for noise initialization and the upsampling mode, we can find that when noise is large or inappropriate upsampling mode is used, the training process is not stable with sudden drops after local optimal. It is only observed in restoration. We also vary architectures to test the performance for restoration. Larger models also generate better results, but they have the risk of instability. Unlike other tasks, skip and the scale has little impact on the performance. Skip model, though with a simple structure, also has a much higher PSNR compared to ResNet. We test whether restoration can generalize to other settings using four additional RGB examples including human, cat, plane, and car. Basically, the experiment result indicates a substantially good ability to restore different kinds of images. In conclusion, in this work, we analyze the performance of deep image prior by varying its hyperparameters, network architecture, and the image. We also compare different applications, including denoising, super resolution, inpainting, and the restoration. Through this study, we find that the original hyperparameters and the network architecture provided by the others could achieve a good result, but they are not optimized. Different tasks have different optimal hyperparameters and the network architectures. Also, deep image prior is robust on different training images. That's all our talk. Thank you very much.